Welcome back again everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back. Uh, thanks a lot for all the feedback on the the last video I did with the voiceover. Um, it wasn't all 100% uh, in favor of. There were a lot of people who did enjoy it. There were some that didn't. Uh, to those that didn't enjoy it, I'm going to apologize in advance. This video is a voiceover again. Um, you know, with this uh, bridge project and river scene that I've been working on, I really found that doing the voiceover uh, allows me to work and continue to keep working without having to, you know, constantly worry about what I'm saying um, and stop to pause the camera, restart the camera, oh I forgot to start the camera, you know, so it really kind of catches more of the, the process and then allows me to, to post edit, if you will. Now, I will say that uh, to finish this river scene, I've been really anxious uh, for many reasons to finish this river scene. One, um, it's been a work in progress for quite a while now, and, um, and so I really want to see it done. Um, but two, uh, you know, the layout's been out of commission with the, the bridge. Um, it's the main line, so I really can't run trains. I mean, I can switch in areas, but you know, like I said uh, in videos past, I really like to run trains while I do stuff at the workbench, and that's kind of prevented me. So I've really, really wanted to get this scene done. Now I'm talking a little bit post and and um, as if the scene is done, and I'm gonna admit that I'm shooting this um, intro, and I've pretty much completed the scene at this point. Um, but uh, the video upcoming is going to be the final steps in, in what took, took place to get me to that point. Um, and I will say that there were a few little miscues um, involved in using a self-leveling product such as epoxy. Um, I will say that the um, self-leveling feature yeah, holds true. <laughs> um, so you'll want to make sure that if you do use the product that you check and make sure that your layout is level in that area or you'll get a nice a large pond where you may have expected a small pond with the river leading up to it. So but that's all I'll say about that. I'll let you watch the video and uh, we'll go from there. So here I'm about to start painting the plaster and uh, just a brown color. Got a cheap can of this stuff from my local hardware store couple bucks I think and uh, the plaster here is the combination of hydrocal and then some sculpt mold so I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this base brown coat over everything uh, just to one to seal the plaster but then also just to give it a an undercoat and, and a brown color for the base So here everything's painted and has a little bit of ground cover applied. So in this step I'm going ahead and ma uh, mixing up some gray and a lighter almost sand color and I'm going to use these to detail the center of the river with the darker color and then the lighter tan for the edges and this will just simulate depth and the river getting deeper as you go towards the middle. It's a standard technique uh, just to show depth without actually being deeper. So here I'm taking the two paint colors that I mix. As you can see, this is like a sandy color, it's slightly lighter than the rest of the brown. And I'm just applying it to the edge of the uh, river itself, kind of where the banks will be. And uh, this is gonna be covered with rocks and sand and stuff to simulate the banks. But uh, for now, I'm just giving it a good undercoat. While I've got the color, I'm going ahead and making uh, the same thing on the island in the center here island in the stream if you will okay that was a bad Kenny Rogers reference there sorry to Dolly Parton uh, but going ahead and just painting all of this a lighter color as these are the raised areas of, uh, of the scene itself So 
So now while I've got the paint still dry, I'm just applying a little bit of sand. This is actually sandblasting sand um, that I've gotten uh, many years ago. But I'm just putting it on just to give it a little bit of texture. So here I'm going to take my cup of joe, actually it's just dark gray paint, and I'm going to go ahead and apply it down the center of the river. Um, now what I learned in doing this process is that you definitely want to feather the two colors together better than what I did. And um, I ended up having to compensate for that a little bit later on. So I highly suggest that you do this in layers and you apply your darker colors in the middle as I'm showing here. But then you come back with the lighter color and, and really kind of feather in the lighter color because these hard lines are not going to be hidden by the epoxy when you apply it. Um, now I, I figured out a way to hide that, but I think that it would have been a much better method had I feathered these in uh, before I applied the, the epoxy water. Here I kind of realized that I've got these hard edges uh, between the two colors. So what I'm trying to do is mask it a little bit with uh, sand. Like I said, I, I think the preferred method would have been actually to come back with paint because this still didn't blend as well as it could have. So I apologize, I jumped ahead a little bit here, but uh, I went ahead and I applied some darker gray in the center. Um, it's actually a slightly darker gray than I had been using. And then I also applied a little bit of Woodland Scenics Talus in here. And what I don't show is I picked up a bag from Home Depot of Spancrete sand. And it's actually a, a very coarse sand. The sand is a standard sand but it has a lot of larger rock pieces in it. And I'll actually, uh, I don't show it, but I come back and I apply that over the top of all the rock that I'm showing here. And it really gave it a good texture and it, it put a lot of little rocks in between these larger rocks and gave the edges of the scene uh, a lot better texture, a lot better feel. Uh, and I really kind of liked it. It drew everything together and you'll see that towards the end. So here what I'm about to construct is basically some walkways leading up to the bridge themselves. Uh, they run on top of the concrete abutments. And uh, this is taken from the model, or the not the model, but the real bridge itself. And I kind of just wanted to simulate. There's railings on both sides. Um, nothing fancy, but uh, so what I'm using here is just some leftover C-beams, I guess. They're not quite I-beams. Um, they're meant for the bridge for a walkway, uh, but I didn't use them. So instead I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just turn them to the outside and make them look like I-beams. Put a piece of styrene on the top uh, to represent the walkway. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, bend some uh, brass wire to create the railings.
So now I'm going through the process of bending some brass wire and uh, just creating the railings that I'll be using. Uh, so I need to make four of these. Uh, I don't remember the exact gauge of this brass wire, um, but uh, I'd have to look that up. Unfortunately, I'm not sure. But just bending it by hand, uh, cutting the pieces to length, and then I'll go ahead and solder these into place. Uh, so one nice thing I do like about working with uh, brass wire is you can solder it easily. You get a nice solid joint. I prefer to solder if I can. Um, and it's a, it's a nice clean um, joint. And uh, once you get good at soldering, you can really minimize how much solder you need um, and eliminate any excess there. So it'll end up with a good clean finished product. Well, it's time to put some water in this river. So what I'm doing here is creating what I think will be a, enough of a dam to stop the epoxy from uh, leaking off the, the layout. Think being the key word. Uh, needless to say, by the time this project is over, you'll see a one by four piece of wood put in place here. And uh, that's what ended up re being required to hold all of the epoxy back. As you can see here, I've also applied the um, sand mixture that I mentioned. And uh, you can see I've kind of layered it into the deeper sections just to create like a sandbar in the middle of the layout. Here you're getting a great shot of my shoulder. Uh, the one problem with kind of working and recording at the same time is sometimes you're not paying attention to what the camera's shooting. I apologize. So what I decided to use is this product uh, called Super Glaze. Uh, I got it uh, at Home Depot. It's about $23 um, for the box. It comes in two parts. It's a 32 ounce um, 
16 ounces of both the A and the B. And what you want to do is measure them out equally. So I've just got these old party cups that I had laying around. I'm going to fill them up equally, put the resin in one and the activator in the other. And the instructions say that you should pour the resin into the activator and then mix for three minutes. And you want to stir kind of, you don't want to stir vigorously. The more vigorously you stir, the more bubbles you'll get in the resin. And then you'll have to work those out later. Um, so you just uh, kind of go as, you know, you got three minutes. You'll get it all stirred up in three minutes. They also suggest that you work in small batches. Um, and small batches is going to kind of be up to you to determine what's a small batch. Here I'm kind of experimenting a little, so I didn't put that much in. You can definitely go bigger than what I did here. Uh, in the end, I think I ended up going and filling up both cups about halfway, and that was a, a manageable size. Uh, for those of you worried uh, about uh, mixing epoxy, uh, it's a very low order, odor, uh, so I had no problem with ventilation. And it also produced very little heat. This is a chemical reaction, so you do have to be careful of that. However, the batch size that I made didn't produce really any heat that I noticed. The cup didn't get warm, um, and it definitely didn't melt through any scenery. Uh, but that is a, a warning that they do give, that it will give off some heat. So I'll spare you the entire three minute mixing process here. I've just got my phone, which I'm going to epoxy into the um, layout. No, I'm kidding, there's a timer. And uh, so I'm just slowly stirring. And you can see I'm getting a little bit more vigorous here, but um, this is the first batch and kind of should have learned my lesson. You get a lot of bubbles in there. And there is the mixing is done, time to pour. One of the key things to watch as I pour this is what direction the epoxy starts to run almost immediately. It's a self-leveling product and it's gonna find a level. The level is not towards the back of the scene. Oh no, the level is towards the front of the scene. So, it starts to work its way down river. You've heard the term herding cats. Well, an equally fruitless activity is pushing water upstream. That's what I'm about to attempt here. Because as I said, the scene is tipped forward just slightly. So I believe that I can push this epoxy back and it'll set quickly. Guess what? It doesn't. It doesn't set quickly at all. You got about 20 minutes of working time and it doesn't set for about two hours. <clears throat> So what ended up happening is, is the water is definitely, or the epoxy is definitely thicker at the edge of the layout as opposed to the back. Now, when the scene is finished, it's hard to tell. Um, and then the front of the layout will be covered by a, um, a fascia, a fascia once I'm done with that. But uh, for the time being, I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. Uh, the manufacturer recommends that you only apply a sixteenth of an inch at a time. However, I found that not to be the case. You can apply it almost as thick as you want and it'll still cure. Now, it is pretty dry in my basement. There's a dehumidifier running, um, so that I think that might have helped dry this. Um, but uh, I didn't have a problem with it being too thick.
So to help hide these unsightly lines here, as you can see in the epoxy, uh, the paint, what I've done here is I mixed another batch of epoxy and then tinted it with polyscale grimy black. Um, you know, when you look at most rivers on Google satellite pictures, you can see the water doesn't look blue. It doesn't really look clear. It generally has a darker tint to it. So what I went ahead and did is just created a top layer and, and you can do this it, uh, absolutely blended just perfectly, uh, but you can definitely see I've got two different colors now and this darker color helped to hide the differences in paint underneath uh, quite a bit. It kind of saved me, otherwise a little worried. Also, now that the epoxy underneath is leveled, this epoxy sat flat, uh, which is kind of a, a nice blessing here. Uh, so that is the good news that the scene does level itself out, hence the self-leveling of the epoxy. So flash forward a little bit here, you can see that I've got the darker color in. Um, I, I personally thought it turned out really well. It hid the bottom of the river scene, I thought quite well. Um, so what I'm applying here is a Woodland Scenics product called Water Effects. Um, and basically it's just a paste, as you can see, it looks a little bit like a Mod Podge or a thick white glue. Um, but what in effect it is, is kind of a, a thin caulk um, and so what I'm doing is just kind of stippling it on here. And wherever I put this, I'm gonna end up with a, a textured surface. And um, this helps to simulate the, um, almost like as if the water was in motion uh, instead of just being still. And then, uh, but what I also do is I apply it to some of the rocks um, to show water kind of lapping up on the rocks, especially to the back side of the abutment here where the river would be flowing downstream and washing up onto the rocks itself. Um, but for now I'm just kind of working on this side of the, the river. Uh, and the thicker you apply it, the, the more defined the water effect is going to be. So I'm kind of making it thin here because it's just the river, surface of the river. Um, so you squirt some on and, and work it around. So here's the water effects applied to the entire scene. Um, and uh, this is gonna start to dry clear. As you can see on the right here, it's already started to dry to some degree. I know flash forwarding a little bit again, but here's the dried water effects and essentially an overview of the entire scene. Um, and you can see how the water effects have really kind of helped blend the riverbed in um, and the bridges are in place and the walkways on the other sides and each side of the abutments are in place as well. It is the inaugural first train over the river bridge. Let's see how it goes. I don't know what the British had against my bridge. I didn't do anything to them. Nah, I'm just kidding. Here's the first actual run across the bridge.
No explosions. Looks like the train's going to make it across successfully. And it's across. Whew. All right. Well, that was the uh, the unveil, the the process to get there, and then the final scene. There's a few things I need to finish up. I need to put ballast in on the track leading up to the uh, actual abutments, actually on the abutments themselves. I kind of wanted to get the train running and just, uh, you know, get a good visual. Um, like I said, I've been so in itching to, to get these trains running again um, that I just kind of had to get it to that point. So I um, hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, I'm really happy with the scene, how it turned out. My first um, kind of adventure with uh, epoxy. Uh, I found it to be a, a really workable product, um, really liked it. Um, the water effects on top really kind of added to it and drew together the whole scene, especially with the painting underneath to give it the look of a deeper river. Um, so uh, that's that. Uh, now I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> um, that scene's been in process for so long that uh, I'm going to take a step back now and, and look at what else I've, I've got on the docket. I've got um, some background buildings and a, where, and, a, and a plant that I'd like to work on, um, so maybe that'll be the next thing. Um, you know, I've got a concrete area, a concrete um, distributor that I'd like to work on as well. Uh, we've got one right here in, in downtown Milwaukee. Uh, that would be a great reference. Um, you know, they receive car loads of, of uh, dry cement and they transload it into, sometimes if you go past there, they'll be transloading it right into trucks. Otherwise, there's silos there that they load into as well. So that might be the next project. We'll see. Um, hopefully, uh, we got something good coming, though. So thanks a lot for sticking with me. I'm um, sorry to those of you who didn't care for the voiceover. Um, like I said, in the future, I hope to do maybe a combination of both uh, just to keep me working, but then also ramble on as I work. So stick with me. Um, I'll be sure to, to try and, and, well, you can't make everybody happy, but I'll do my best. So thanks a lot, everyone. We'll see you next time.